welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. Welcome to this class this evening. And uh, as you find your seat with any of the props that you have at home, it can be pillows, blankets, anything that helps you settle and arrive, do so. Invite your seat to be long and steady, the chest lifted, and let your hands ground on top of your thighs, and the elbows to move a little bit back towards your mid-back. As we enter this practice today, invite your eyes to move downward towards your lungs. And as you arrive to the practice, connect with the weight of your bones sense the heavy bones in your body, the ones that feel more pounded onto earth or the support you have beneath. And then you can also bring a sense to the lighter bones in your body, like your cranium, your sternum. Slowly creating this relationship that we build as we move into our practice. Touch into the rise and fall of your breath, inviting those strokes of breath to be soft, feeling the nostril area, as you inhale and exhale. And bring the awareness to the thread of the moment. Bringing a spirit of joy and compassion into yourself and making this practice as we move physically, an opportunity to free ourselves from suffering and move away from attachment and aversion. This week, the portion of the sutras that I'm sharing is the fourth of what we call the kleshas, and it's actually related to attachment. It's called raga, and it has to do with those attachments that we have sometimes to past traumatic experiences. Maybe there is some memory of something in your past, long gone or maybe not so far back. And we all have those and it's a very normal thing. The philosophy, what it tells us is that when those traumatic memories are affecting our present moment and holding us back to move on, to be able to breathe in the present moment, what's there for us now, that's where we have work to do so we can unhook, right? Like what I was saying right before. We can free ourselves from suffering and move away from those attachments by bringing compassion, making space to feel the sensations, the emotions that arise with those memories, and giving ourselves an opportunity to empty ourselves or empty our caps from those past memories that are traumatic, with reverence, with gratitude for what they taught us, so we can move on. So let your body today be the vessel for your awareness. And may we all through this practice be there for each other, supporting ourselves and all beings. Let's bring our palms together inviting the thumbs to rest in front of the heart center, 
taking a moment to visualize yourself moving through the practice with the quality, the intention that you bring to it today. Setting the intention to help us act accordingly, listening to our bodies, our breath, ourself. If you choose to join me, we'll open with the own sound, inhaling deeply first, a big exhale through the mouth, and then breathing in again. Then we connect the head, the hands, the heart, the three together at the center. Releasing the palms slowly back down to your thighs lifting the head and opening the eyes when you're ready. Thank you everyone for being here. If I didn't say hi before, welcome now. And uh, we are moving on to our mats. As you can see, my mat is covered by a blanket and we're going to work on a short sequence as we start with the blanket so we can slide, okay? So I'm moving there. I'm going to bring my poster in case it's needed later. And uh, I'm going to wait so you can place your blankie on top of your mat. My mat is hiding right behind, right uh, uh, below. And then uh, we'll uh, undo this so we can work on the rest of the things. So to start today, we are coming on to our quote unquote Shavasana shape. We are going to be facing up. And as we come into the shape today, we are going to keep the arms alongside your trunk, alongside your body with the palms facing down. And take just a couple of breaths, as we usually do when we start in this manner, to sense the weight of your bones now changing, right? Uh, as we were before, possibly all of us sitting. Now we let the leg bones release, feel your pelvis, your hips, the torso relaxing and dropping, connecting and spreading into the mat and deeper into the core of earth. We'll try to start from now on a more uh, fluid nostril breathing type in our practice, what we call the Ujjayi breath. Not trying to force it, but just being aware of that breath staying smooth, and fluid through the practice. And then slowly we'll start the first movement that we will do today to activate the upper back and the shoulders. I'm going to slide, I'm going to start on my right side so you can see this arm. I'm going to slide my right hand down towards the end of my mat and then slowly slide it back up. And then I'm going to slide the left hand down towards my feet and then slowly return. And again, right hand coming down, like if I wanted to go and touch my heel, let's say, but it's not extreme, and then coming back, and then the left hand sliding down, returning to center. So give yourself time, no running. Again, we slide right hand down, then slowly back to neutral, then the left, and back. And we start creating a little bit more of a flow. So if you want, you can, it's not that I'm going much faster, it's just that I'm trying to relate one to the other side. And then again, inhaling, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Again, inhaling, going one way, exhaling the other way and we come back towards the center and then we release sensing here for a moment the sensations they are just starting to activate the arms good then we are going to slowly move the arms out to the sides and I'm going to turn my palms out. So if you have the space, T letter shape for the arms. And this time, like I said, my palms are facing up. If this doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can keep the palms facing down. It's pretty much the same. 
It's just that one is an external rotation and the other one is internal rotation. But if there's stuff going on and you may need to change that, it's absolutely fine. So now what I'm going to do is to try and move my right arm away from my body. So it's like I really try to open up my right shoulder blade and I'm moving it away from my chest and then coming back. It's not going super far, right? But I'm trying to create that movement to extend that left shoulder blade away from my heart and then returning. And then I'm going again, right side, just a few inches and then returning left side and returning. I don't have a lot of space in my left side, so I cannot go that far, but you know what I mean, right? So I'm going like a T letter to the right and then back and then the left and back. Let's go again to your right side, trying to expand that right shoulder blade and then bringing it back behind the chest, then the left side and back. Let's go again. Right side to the right and back. Left side and back. One more each side, no rush. Go one way, feel the opening of one shoulder blade away from the midline of your body and then the second side and we return. Beautiful. From here, I'm going to keep my legs rested as they are, but this time I'm going to send my arms overhead and I'm going to stretch my arms away from my legs and I'm going to start pressing a little bit more through the legs and the heels. Try to create an internal rotation in your legs. It's minimal, it's not extreme. I'm just trying to send the inseam of my pants a little bit lower down towards the center of my mat as I push through the heels. And then I'm extending my fingernails and fingertips away from the head. Take a deep inhalation here. And deep exhale and release the arms. Beautiful. Now from here, I'm going to bring both my arms up towards the ceiling. As you can see, I have my palms like a, the namaste or prayer position. And I'm going to try and keep my arms without bending. So I'm going to try to not bend my elbows. And what I'm going to do now is slide my right hand a little further up and then bring it down. Then I'm going to slide my left palm up and bring it down. So you see how again I'm creating a different movement for my shoulder blades, but I'm moving that shoulder blade away from my center or midline and then back and then the other side and back and this is a very good opportunity to notice what's going on on one side and the other like we usually do with this type of work we keep the head at the center we have a chance to just take notes without judgment the sensations on the right maybe compared to the left if it feels more gripped or tense or loose one side and the other, okay? So I keep going a few times, up and down and up and down. And we'll do one more each side. Good, when I come back to center, I'm still not releasing my arms. I keep my palms touching each other. And in this one, I'm going to bend my knees and put my feet down so I have a little bit uh, of a better uh, stability here or support. And again, I'm going to keep my palms together without bending my elbows. This time, I'm going to move both my arms to the left as I bring my chin to the right. And you'll see that the elbows will want to bend. <laughs> so we have to fight a little bit of that tendency. And then I'm coming back to center and I'm going to switch it. I'm going to keep my um, arms straight and I'm bringing my chin to the left as I move my arms to the right and then I'm coming back. I want to try to not uh, let my palms go away from each other, but naturally that's going to happen. So no worries. I'm sending both my arms to the left, chin to the right, 
back to center, both arms to the right, chin to the left, back to center. Let's keep going a few more. Slowly sending arms and head away from each other. Then we come back again, an opportunity to notice sensations in the neck and the shoulders. Remember, we are trying to create a practice that is fluid and we release attachments to what is supposed to look good or be perfect or fancy, okay? One more time, we go arms to one side, chin to the opposite side, returning, going in a gentle way, opposite side for the arms and the chin, back to center, and then we slowly release the arms, and we take a deep breath in here, deep breath out, Good. Just a few more before we change this. We lace the fingers this time. We'll bring the hands behind the skull. I'm going to keep my right knee bent with the foot down and I'm going to extend my left leg. I did this one in the past, so maybe you already remember or you saw it. And in this one, what we're going to do is to combine upper back and the leg. So I'm going to let my right knee drop across the midline towards the left as I bring both my elbows to the right. This will create an arch and a twist, and then I'm returning to center. We'll do five total of this same side. Going with the knee towards the left, elbows towards the right, and we return. Three more, going with your breath. Two more. Last one. Good, returning to center, release the elbows, extend your right leg, take a breath for nothing here, one full inhalation, let it go. And then we'll bend the left knee, left foot on your mat. My elbows and my upper arms and forearms, they are sliding in that uh, blankie, right? So now I'm going to slide to the left as my left knee drops to the right, and then return to center. Four more like that without rushing. There's three more to go, notice. Also, what's happening in the lower back, the sensations with that twist. And again, an opportunity to take notes, one side and the other, or the way our bodies tend to compensate the movement. Last one. Going back to center. Extending that left leg, take a deep breath in. And with the exhale, again, we bend the knees, this time both, and we put the feet down. Good. So now we're going to add a little bit of the cat-cow that we also did a few times in this class. And I'm going to add a little bit of twisting so we add more uh, opening in the thoracic area as well. So we are going to inhale, press the mat, arching the lower back, chin up a little. And with the exhale, this one is the challenge, I'm going to lift navel towards the spine I'm going to also lift my knees towards my elbows, and I'm going to send elbows and knees away from each other. And then I'm returning back to the mat, inhaling, opening up, exhaling, I'm lifting, and I'm twisting knees and elbows opposite way. Back to center, release, inhale, open up through the chest, press the elbows down, Exhale, we lift, navel in, elbows, knees opposite from each other, back to center. Again, we inhale, opening. Exhaling, we bring it in, twisting elbows, knees to opposite sides. Back to center, one more time each side, inhaling, open. Exhale, bring it up, elbows, knees opposite, 
center, going down for the last one, inhale, exhale, twisting, back to center, and we release here for a moment, release the arms, release the legs, and I'm sure that you feel a little bit of fire in that core, right in that center. So now we are going to stretch it again. This time we send the arms again overhead. Lace your fingers and press your palms towards the furniture or anything you have behind you over the head. Press those palms away so we open up the base of the palms, the wrists and the knuckles in your four fingers like when we are in Tadasana and see if you feel a big arch in the lower back, see if you can lower a little bit of the abdomen towards earth, pushing through the inner heels. One more breath. And then exhale, release the arms, bend the knees, roll over to your right side or any side, and then we push up towards sit. Before we get rid of this blanket, slowly coming into uh, a modified child's pose. I'm going to show you uh, which version we are doing today. So in this one today again, because we want to activate and um, ignite more opening in the thoracic area, what I'm going to do today is to keep my knees a little closer to each other. And I'm going to put my elbows on my mat and my palms are touching again like the namaste shape, okay? Now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to let my head rest on my forearms. I'm not pushing the head down, it's just like a place where I can rest. My elbows are more or less shoulder distance apart. And then from there, it's a, a tricky movement, but it's quite easy. What I'm going to do is just like drive one elbow forward and then bring it back. And then I'm going to drive the other elbow towards the top of my mat and then back, okay? And again, driving the elbow forward, so I'm stretching that side, and then bringing it back. Second side, going towards the front of the mat, and return, and again, a few more. Right elbow, or the one that you're going with now, stretching and bringing it forward, and then back. Second side, and back. Last one, let's go each side. One going over to the front or top of the mat and back. And then the other and back. Beautiful, then from there, let's bring the sitting bones a little further back towards your heels and extend the arms. Take three breaths through the nose. We return to that Ujjayi breath. Notice where the breath is going. Invite it to move to all corners of the body. And as we exhale, we empty our cups, we release what we need to let go of. Good. Then from there slowly, we lift up into a seat. And now is the moment where we are going to move out so we can take this blanket out, but we are going to use it. So I want you to, um, if you have a regular blanket, I want you to fold it two or three times so you can have it more or less like this. I'll show you what's coming. And then we are going to add a block to our uh, next exercise. So I'm going to put my block flat on my mat. I'm going to move the mat a little so you can see it. And then on top of that block, I'm going to set my blanket, okay? So it's not so hard. Particularly me, I have a hard block, one of those uh, core blocks, so it's a little hard. But uh, we are going to add a blanket there, okay? So then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sit in front of this setup that I prepared. And once I'm ready, I'm going to wait. I'm going to put the back of my chest my shoulder blades will be sitting and resting right on top of that setup that I did. Now I'm going to show you something. The idea is that the shoulders are a little bit out of that setup because it's the back of my chest what's supported and my head easily comes towards the floor. Now for some of us, it doesn't come easily to the floor, which is absolutely fine. 
So if that is the case for you, you can add a pillow behind your head, any pillow for, from the sofas that you have or from the bed, so you are more elevated and you don't feel like you're struggling with the neck there, like there's a lot of distance, okay? So I'm going to show this here. And then because my shoulders are close to the floor, even though they are not completely touching, I can drop the shoulders down and let my arms go to the sides, okay? I'm going to keep my feet on the mat so it helps uh, not create a huge back bend because this is already a back bend, but this is a really good opportunity to open here through the lungs. Keep your arms for now to the sides with the palms uh, facing up and take three breaths. And then we'll add a couple of exercises before moving into the down dog. So take a deep breath in and out. Tap into that fluid breath through the nose. Notice how the side lines of your chest become longer perhaps or with more length, more opening in the side ribs, in the heart center and the lungs. Let everything expand. Softening the face, relaxing the skull down, making sure you have support under the head. Good. If it's comfortable for you and you want to experience having the legs out towards the end of your mat, it's absolutely fine. I'm not saying it as a must because it may give you lower back pain, so that one won't be very happy. But the one that I like the most and the one that I'm going to demo is crossing one shin over the other, like if you're in Sukhasana or the seated posture, right? When we sit easily and we cross one leg over the other. So that one, I like it sometimes, it feels good and uh, it doesn't feel too strenuous, okay? So then from here, what I'm going to do, you need to make sure that you have a little bit of space <laughs> behind you. And I'm going to just put my extra props there. And what I'm going to do now is to extend my arms over my head and I'm going to Try and extend through the fingertips, right? So I'm creating a lot of opening as I extend the arms. And then I'm going to do a little trick here. What I'm going to do is first to keep my palms facing up, taking a deep inhalation here. Deep exhale or fluid, long, steady exhale. And you can stay in this position without changing what I'm going to show. But another version of this that helps also with more opening is to keeping the palms as they are facing up, take the fingers, I don't know if you can see, but I'm turning my fingers towards the floor. And it's almost like if I want to walk my fingers towards my head. So it is forcing me to really stretch my arms. I can feel it <laughs> in my inner arms. So I'm trying to create more length through the arms. And in turn, that will open my armpits, the thoracic area, the upper back and the chest. So this is the second option if you want to go a little further, but you can keep the palms facing up without changing the position of the hands. Good, another breath in. Good, then slowly release the arms, and I promise this is the last one here. Now I'm going to take my arms out to the sides like a pillar. I'm going to maybe show you this side because the other one is uh, hiding, right? So uh, on my side that is closest to the camera, what I'm going to try and do is, remember in the beginning we did that uh, action of like stretching the shoulder blades away from, from the center. So I'm going to keep that happening as much as I can. And then I'm going to create an external rotation in my arms. You see how I'm turning my arm like towards the floor behind me. That's an external rotation. I'm trying to touch the floor with both, right? This side I don't have the space, but with both my arms turning back, and extending through my fingertips, trying to reach the floor. Of course, it doesn't matter if you're not reaching the floor, but we create that external rotation, which will in turn, in turn extend also the collarbones and create that opening and lifting we want, okay? Two breaths. Good. 
Good. Then slowly release through the arms. Put your feet back onto your mat. And then slowly, if you want, taking one arm up, roll over to one side. And we slowly press up. Beautiful. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out because we were opening and upside, like right facing up for a while. So it can feel a little tricky. Good. And I'm going to keep this same setup for my next shape. So keep it there as it is. You may need to modify it a little bit, perhaps with some extra height. But I'm going to keep it as it is. And now I'm going to hold my mat from the sides. I don't know if you can see. I'm moving this so you can see. Just for a moment. I'm going to hold my mat on the sides. And I let the blanket come on top of my hands. So I'm gripping my mat from the sides. And from there, I'm going to tap my toes to come up into a downward facing dog. I'm going to try and keep that, that setup that I have so I can set my head there as a support. So for me, I know I need to move it a little closer. And you may need, as I said, perhaps a little extra height, okay? For me, it works, so I have the crown of my head supported with that setup that I had before. And if you need, widen the feet. I usually like my first down dog to be a little wider than, my, than the usual, so I put my feet close to the edges of the mat. And then from there, bending the knees, push the mat away, keep some contact from the crown of the head or some place like maybe it's the hairline or a little, a little higher with that uh, setup that you have. And then slowly start contracting the kneecaps and the quads towards the back of your legs, sending the sacrum up, toning the legs, pushing the mat away with external rotation in the upper arms, releasing the neck and letting the head be slightly or gently supported by that setup that we had. Bring the ribs in, and draw the pelvic floor up towards your uh, heart. Take a few breaths. Good, and then we'll slowly bend the knees to send them back down, and we'll come back towards a seat for a moment. Beautiful, okay. Now I'm going to take that blanket out to the side and I'm going to use my block and we will in turn use also our bed. So bring it with you, not yet, but we will use it. Okay, good, just check it. Everything good, we are good? Cool, I hope that we're good. <laughs> okay, now that block, I'm going to put it right behind, uh, right under my sitting bones and I'm going to sit into the Virasana shape, okay? So my heels are outside the blocks. I'm sitting tall. For some of us, we need extra support. So you can put two blocks instead or something that is higher for you. And you can even use your blanket in between the legs or on top of that block if you need it. Fold it or unfold it if you need extra, okay? So first thing that I'm going to do here in this Virasana shape, take a deep breath. Lift from the navel up towards your nose. Good. And from here, I'm going to send my arms behind. I'm going to lace the fingers or interlock the fingers, roll the shoulders back, extend through the arms, and lengthen the arms back as you lift the front of the spine. Okay. My chin is staying off my chest, more or less parallel to the floor. I lift through the crown of the head. And from the hip points, lift the side body up to the armpits, shoulder blades down, arms down and back. Two breaths. Good, and then we slowly release. Beautiful, keeping this same setup, I'm going to show you what's coming next. Now I'm going to take my belt or any kind of uh, scarf that you can use. You will need a loop. And when you do the loop for this one, we are going to try and make it shoulder to shoulder distance apart. I usually do it a touch uh, shorter than that, more like armpit to armpit, because sometimes we tend to push into it and it opens up a little more. So more or less shoulder to shoulder. And then, I'm waiting, 
reading so you can prepare it. And then after you have it, I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So this one is also super good for chest and upper back. So I have that, uh, that loop. And instead of having it in front of me, I'm going to use it behind me. And I'm going to put one arm and then the other. And I'm showing you how I put it right above my elbows. Okay, It's just for a little bit. <laughs> and then I'm sitting in my Virasana shape. Okay, Now I have that belt behind. It's behind me. It's hold, held at the elbow area. And what I'm going to try and do, of course, my belt is already making me send my shoulders back. I'm sitting tall. And now I'm going to use my hands right behind me. So I'm putting my hands more or less where my waistline is, okay? And like I said before, if that belt is super wide, it's not going to create that opening that we want to create. So that's why I made it for me a little tight. Then from there, I'm going to keep rolling those shoulders away from the ears, shoulder blades down, and I'm kind of like breaking right into that belt, and I'm lifting the chest, and I'm using my hands like I said, in the waistline, but if I can send them a little higher, I'm going to try and send them a little higher. Okay, so you'll feel more of that connection into the upper back. I'm showing the back so you see more or less what happens for me, right? So I'm trying to go a little higher with my hands, shoulder blades down, and I'm breaking into the belt, but of course the belt is not letting me go too far with my elbows, which is what we want. And we feel that action in the upper back. If you are a little bit imaginative, <laughs> which I know you all, you all are, and you or, and you see maybe in a yoga class people doing a shoulder stand, this is very much the shape that we create when we are doing a shoulder stand. So this is the idea for this moment, just to learn this, even though we are using it as an opener for the chest. Okay, but this would be a very good way to practice that. So I'm opening through the chest. I'm sending those shoulder blades down and I keep those elbows in a way they are forced to stay towards each other, okay? Good, then slowly release that. Let that bell come down, slowly. Good, and we are going to use these for one more thing here. So now I'm going to make that belt a little bigger. This one is a super good, <laughs> super good exercise. So I made it a little wider and First side that I'm going to show is my right side, so you can see here. I'm going to build that leg. So I put the shin and the thigh together, and I'm going to tighten them a little. But I'm keeping a little bit of my loop, I try to show here, loose, so I can, I can uh, catch it. I can catch the loop, okay? Good. Put that belt inside. So what I did was, again, I'm going to show. I have that leg like this in the Virasana shape, and I put the belt inside. So I can put together my shin and my thigh, okay? And I'm tightening a little bit. Once I have that, this is the cool part. Now I put my belt on my right leg, but the hand that is going to catch the belt is my left. So I'm going to send my left arm all the way behind until I catch my belt, okay? Usually I catch where the battle is, so I don't, um, I don't press it into my skin because it doesn't feel good. So do you see how, well, I cannot move much, but you see how my left arm is the one catching the right side of the belt, okay? So there's a lot of opening in my left shoulder happening, good? Okay, we sit tall, right hand to the left knee, and I'm going to inhale and lift, and move my belly and my chest towards the left, and then bring the chin to the right. So this is an excellent way to open that left side. We are opening now. And even though there's a lot of things going on, I'm trying to keep my spine tall, belly and chest to the left, grabbing that belt, right, with the left hand, and the chin coming to the right. Breathing through the nose a few times. One more breath. Good, and then slowly I'm returning to center, taking that left hand out, and I'm going to release that belt. Take a breath, 
we'll go to the last side. I'm going to stay the same so you can see me now on this side. So now the belt, I'm going to hook it inside my left leg, chin and thigh together. I'm going to tighten it a little bit, right? You have to make sure that your right arm can go all the way and touch it, so you leave it as big as you need. Good, once I'm there, right arm going all the way back, behind until I can catch that belt. I'm making it a little uh, tighter for me. Good, and then I'm going to lift through the spine and twisting towards the right, right? So I'm bringing that right hand a little further to the left, if you can catch there. I'm pulling that belt, right, with my right hand. Lift through the spine, left hand to the right knee. You feel perhaps that opening a lot on this right side, so go easy if you need to loosen the bell. Deep inhale here. And with the exhale, chin to your left. Now if you pay attention, you'll feel possibly like I'm feeling, the right shoulder blade is moving in, right? It's moving behind your chest. Now the left one is doing the opposite movement because I'm opening it up towards the right. So the left shoulder blade is widening out and the right shoulder blade is moving into the body. Okay, good. Chin is still to the left for another breath or two. Good, and then we slowly release, returning, take that belt out. I know we've been sitting in the Virasana shape a lot. Take your block out, shake a little bit through the feet and the shins, move the feet and tuck your, tuck your toes and press into the base of the toes. Good. No props for now. Now we are going to come into a regular downward facing dog. So make sure that you put your hands with a little bit of a spin of the fingers out towards the edges of your mat. Press through the base of your four fingers and thumbs. If you need to modify this because down dog is not appropriate for you, you can stay in the tabletop for a moment and work with the abdomen, hugging into the spine so you work the core and the stability of the hips, okay? This time I'm going to do a regular down dog, so I'm not going to widen my feet so much. Keep distance apart. I'm lifting there. And then I'm trying to lengthen through the heels, center of the heels down, pressing into the base of the big toes and pinkies. Then I'm drawing again the pubic bone up, ribs down, releasing the head, taking a few breaths here to reopen the legs that were compressed for a while as we were doing those Virasana uh, drills, okay? So from here, a few more breaths. External rotation in the upper arms. Push the mat away, relax that head, and feel that sacrum as the apex of your pose. Good, one more breath. Good, then walk your feet towards your hands. Good, keep the feet hip distance apart, bend the knees if you need, relaxing the head there. Just a moment, then hands to hips. Remember that belt that we put behind the, uh, like above the elbows and we were like pressing in, like into one another, or breaking into the belt. Try to find that shape again. Press into the base of your feet, heels, and lift your inner arches to lengthen the spine and come all the way up to standing. Good, super. From here, we are going to take our belts again and we're going to use that loop again for something else. And you may very well need also a block, okay? So these are the things that we are using for now. So the first thing that I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do it here, is that I'm going to put my right foot forward. We're going to take a low lunge and I'm going to put my block on the left for when I need it. It can be flat, medium, any height. But we need to get into the shape first. So this low lunge will also have an element <laughs> that it's an extra. I'm making that loop a little bigger than the one that I had before. And I'm going to put that loop into my left heel, okay? Left heel. Good, so get there. 
and take um, take that loop with your left hand for now until you have it, okay? Good, now what I'm going to do, unusual because this is a new thing, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to go and hold that belt with my right hand. So it's the opposite of the foot or the leg that is behind, right? So I have my right hand into that left heel or a little lower so it doesn't fall. I'm going to hook there and my left hand is going to come onto my block. Yes, we have this, I hope we do. Press into that block with your left hand so you feel supported. It can be like I said, flat, medium or taller. And I want you to push into your right heel because you will need it a lot for support and stability. So the center of my right heel is pressing down. The base of my toes is pressing down. I'm pulling that left heel towards me. And I'm going to slowly start lifting the left knee off the mat. And I'm going to try and go and grab that belt as far low as I can. So I create a twist and I'm opening that right shoulder back, okay? I'm pushing the block away with my left hand, lifting that left arm so it's straight. And I'm opening a lot through my right hand going back towards my heel, okay? Now, if you can, send your right hip back towards the back of your mat, inhale. Exhale. One more. Lift through that left leg and see if you can drop the right knee a little further forward. Good, then slowly release the left knee down and we come back. Ha, ah, good job. Okay, let's switch sides. <laughs> now I'm going to, again, stay in the same side so you can see the other side when I do it. I'm going to put my left foot forward. My block will be on the right side. And this time I'm going to hook my belt on my left, sorry, right heel, okay? Good, once I have that, we know what's coming. Now I'm going to hold that belt with my left hand. I'm going to switch sides. This belt wants to leave me. <laughs> Good, okay, I'm going to hold with my left hand into that belt, right hand into the block. I'm going to press into the left heel, center of the heel down, pushing through the base of my toes, I'm using my block as a support, any height, roll the shoulders back. And then when you feel ready, press into the base of your right toes, lift that back knee, I need to lengthen my belt, lift the right knee up, and then pull into that belt, I'm walking my hand a little further back so I can open the chest a little more, shoulder back. And then again, I'm going to tone that left inner thigh. I'm trying to push that back heel into my belt. And I'm trying to bend the front knee, left hip back, chest opens. Breathing in and out. Feel that opening through the chest. One more breath. Then slowly release. Woo, burning. Good. And then take that belt out and coming back. Good, sit back for a moment. This time we are going to sit back, but I want you to tuck your toes. You're not gonna love me anymore, but I want you to tuck your toes and sit on your heels. If this is too much, block in between your heels and your back bones. This makes it much easier. And it's a very good way to train those toes to have more space in between and irrigate blood in the whole back plane of your body, back chain, okay? So we are going to try and do that, either or, block or not. And then we're going to send the arms up, lace the fingers, press your palms up towards the skies, lengthen through the sides, make your inner arm bones long, go up to the skies, bring the ribs down, send the arms a little further back, and lift your chin off the chest. One more breath. Then slowly release, beautiful. Let's take that block or without block out, untag the toes, one more down dog, let's go up. Good, lengthen here. Okay, bring your knees down for a moment. And now we are going to put our forearms down and we are going to interlock 
the fingers so we can press down onto the mat, okay? Pressing through the elbows. This exercise can be done with the uh, same distance that we did in the beginning because it's very helpful, so I'm going to show. Same idea, shoulder to shoulder or armpit, armpit to armpit. And again, I'm putting that belt right above the elbows. It can be very helpful to learn the posture and to also develop more strength in your upper back. So I'm going to hold there, I'm pressing my palms into one another, or I'm interlocking my fingers like I said before. And then I'm going to lift up into my down dog. So again, we are working upper back and a lot of strength and stability. Draw the abdomen in, tuck your toes, lift up, walk your feet maybe a little closer, press through the center of the heels, draw the abdomen in, ribs down, and I want you to um, connect into the floor with your forearms and the inner elbows. Imagine you're drilling the floor with that line, it's like slingshots. The inner line of your forearms and elbows pressing down so you can lift that chest towards your thighs. Then slowly bring the knees down. And let's take a child's pose here. Widen the knees, relax the torso, forehead down, and rest for a few seconds. Just checking that everything is okay. Take a few breaths. One more, long inhale, and exhale. Beautiful, from there slowly, we are going to lift up, again into standing, and we are going to take the wide leg stance for also some work with the upper back as we fall. I'm going to show you sideways because I want you to see a few things that we're going to do with the arms, um, but if you need to have blocks in front of you, you can bring them so you have extra support, okay? So coming into the wide leg shape, you want to, of course, have a wide leg shape that it's easy to hold, that you don't feel like you're falling and it's too wide, right? And I also want you to be able to activate the outer edges of your feet. So if it's very hard, it might be that your legs are very far apart. I want you to press into the outer edges of the feet, lift the inner arches, Send the sacrum down, draw the navel up towards your nose, inhale the arms up overhead, good, and draw the abdomen up, hug that core in, drawing the pelvic floor up, ribs down, and from the hips, we are going to hinge, and slowly we come until we find the hands coming down under the shoulders, okay? Now for today's purpose, Instead of keeping my hands up, if the hands are not touching down, then you put two blocks, any height, and you are a little taller, right? And you press into the blocks. If you are okay on the floor, what we are going to do today is that we're going to create an external rotation with the arms. So I'm going to turn both my arms and my hands until my fingertips are pointing towards the back, okay? So this is what I'm doing, right? Instead of here, I turn, my fingertips are pointing towards my toes, right, or towards my feet. And from there, I'm going to inhale, lengthen the spine, draw the abdomen up. Shoulders are moving away from the neck. For another breath. Good. Keep the action through the legs. So press into the outer edges of your feet, press through the base of your toes, lift the inner arches. And now, if you can, we are going to add a little more by walking those hands a little further back, the same way they were. So my fingertips are pointing back. And I'm walking those hands a little further until I release the neck and the head there. 
no worries about how far you're going. If this is not working today, you stay in the first portion of what we did, right? This is super beneficial. We're already working that opening in the chest. I'm just adding a little more, going further back, find the place that it's enough for you, okay? We listen here for a few moments. Draw the inner heels down, but lift the inner arches up, press into the base of your big toes. Let that head relax. One more breath. Then slowly walk your hands back, turning the, the fingertips forward as usual. Heel toe your feet towards one another. Good. And then put your hands on your hips, roll the shoulders back, and slowly come up. Okay, beautiful. Super. Okay, you're going to be surprised. <laughs> but what I'm going to say now, if you want, and if you have a wall close by, with all of this opening and the strength that we created in the arms, we're going to play a little bit more. But this may not be for everyone, but it's a good way to also activate everything and go upside down. So I know some of you that you may want to try two options. One, the, the simple one, if you don't want to go into the handstand that I'm going to show, you're going to put your feet as wide as your mat. You're going to bring a block if you need or two in front, and you're going to take a forward fold with the feet, not as wide as we had them before, but just like I said, the width of the mat. And if you can, you put a block or two so the crown of the head is supported there and you release. Okay, this is number one. Number two, you get close to a wall or a dresser or a piece of furniture. And we're going to try and create that action that we did with the shoulder blades before. Moving everything in, pushing the floor away. And all of the exercises that we did when I said extend through the arm bones and make them super straight, that's what we are going to do here. So just a quick demo for this. I'm going to put my hands close to the wall. I'm pushing the floor away. And we try to keep the legs straight. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to swing until I lift. And then I'm going to push the floor away. Inner legs lifting, inner heels lifting. Trying to draw the sacrum long so there's no arching right like i'm showing there in the lower back i'm trying to make myself tall 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 lifting 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 and maybe we stay there for a moment pushing the floor away and if you did that a little bit or so <laughs> when you come down you take a child's pose and you rest For the ones doing the forward fold, you can also come down and take a child's pose for one minute or less. And rest there for a minute. Take a few breaths. Okay, then slowly from the child's pose, we'll sit up, beautiful, and we are going to extend the legs in front, and we'll come into a couple of supine postures, okay? So, if you want to have the uh, belt close by for a modified um, bridge pose that we are going to do, have it with you, and also have your blocks. Okay, because I'm going to show you something with that. But before we do that one, come onto your back. And then from there, you're going to cross the right leg over the left one and bring your feet towards you. If the feet are is not easy to catch, you can go onto your knees and you bring them in. Okay. And we stay here for three breaths.
then we slowly switch opposite lay on top bring both knees in or the feet if you can you catch them relaxing the shoulders down another full breath softening the face the jaws the tongue and then we slowly release that beautiful okay i'm going to roll over and lift up so i can show you the next thing so for the next one i really like this version it's a little bit different than what we are used to do but you know me alignment and some props so if for this one you just need a baseboard so anything where you can have your blocks at the wall so it holds right and you don't move so much so i'm putting both my blocks flat pressing into the baseboard and i'm keeping them more or less hip distance apart because i'm going to put my feet on top so you don't want them to be super wide okay if you don't have a place where you can push your blocks into into it you are going to take a regular bridge pose with your feet on your mat because I'm not sure that depending on the blocks or the support that you have, if you don't have anything that it's going to hold them or stop them, maybe they are going to move and then it's not going to be good, you're going to maybe hurt, okay? So for me, I have the baseboard, I'm putting my feet on top of those blocks and I'm going to come into the shape that I would go when I go into a bridge pose, right? But my feet are elevated, so it creates more opening even in my upper back and my chest. Now, second option is to take that same strap that I had with shoulder distance apart for that loop and add a little bit of, remember when we were sitting in Virasana and we put the belt and we uh, were holding the waistline and we were doing that opening? We are going to try and do it here with the same belt, but <laughs> to do that, we need to be kind of like halfway into the posture because it goes behind, right? So it's a little bit of a tricky thing. But I'm going, what I'm going to do is to try and keep it a little wider so I don't struggle so much in putting it, and I'm going to just put one arm there, okay? Pressing into the feet, I'm going to draw navel in. Glutes are active, pushing into my hips so I can lift. So I'm pushing my blocks. I'm lifting, then I'm going to put that belt underneath so I can hook my other arm underneath also. And what I did is to lock myself inside that belt with uh, my, there again, you know, like you can see right above my elbows, okay? I just want to move the buckle away from my skin. <laughs> Good. So then I have that, I'm pushing into the belt, into the block, sorry. And then I'm lifting as much as I can and with my hands, I'm going to try and go again where I was before, as high as I can go. And then I'm squeezing or kind of tucking my shoulder blades in a little more. And I'm helping with my hands to lift my pelvis, to lift my torso, to lift my chest a little higher. Press into the blocks with your feet. Don't lose the power of your inner heels and big toes. Don't move your head and take three breaths. Good. Try to keep that sacrum moving into your body. Glutes are active. Hips are lifting and they are firming into your pelvis so there's no lower back pain. And now we probably need help from a family member to take us out. <laughs> no, I'm joking. From here, you're going to release your arms. Maybe with one hand, you can just pull part of the belt out if you have the belt. And then slowly releasing. We come with the trunk down towards the mat. Okay, take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. One more. Good. And then slowly, if you can, roll over to one side so we can get rid of that belt if it's still around, if you were using it, and we take it out. Okay, good. Okay, now I'm going to show you something else. Again, if you have, this can be done without the wall, but if you have it, it's a really nice support and I love the wall. So what we're going to do is like the Balakonasana, but instead of the Balakonasana, like the cross leg, 
at the wall. But you don't need it, right? Because you could very well, if you don't have it, you could very well be on your mat, cross one leg over the other, and just bring your feet towards you, okay? So this can be also the way to do the posture. So I'm going to just stay here so I don't come and go, but I'm crossing one shin over the other, my feet towards me. And this is a really nice way to expand the lower back and feel that space that perhaps was a little bit contracted or constricted when we were doing the bridge pose, which was a bit back then. So we reset that area. Take a few breaths. Beautiful, and then we'll just switch the leg that is in front, cross, put, it, put the other one on top, grab those feet again, if you are doing this version and bring them in, or just add the wall. Three, four breaths, stay there. Again, we take this opportunity to slow down again, to draw the attention back in, to return with the gaze towards the heart, towards the lungs, and move a little deeper as we are getting closer to the end. Good, then slowly, what we're going to do before the end is to unwrap or uncross the legs and choose a gentle twist of your choice. A gentle twist of your choice can be to just send your arms to the sides or a cactus shape and bring both knees together towards one side and stay there with your chin going the opposite way of the legs, just for two, three breaths, and then switch that, okay? So gentle because we've been working a lot with doing different positions and we don't need to go super strong into that twist. If you like or you're more used to extending one leg, having one knee in and then crossing that leg to the opposite side. If you don't push too hard, that can be also a good twist. So we stay on one side for a few breaths and then the other. Give yourself the same amount of time that you are gifting one side to the second side when you go there. Go to your second side if you didn't go. If you are there, finish the same amount. Good. Then we return towards the center. And like I usually like to end class, Again, today we, I worked a lot with the wall, so I'm just suggesting if you have a wall or a piece of furniture where you can send your legs up, then you can put your legs up there for a cooling inversion, a restorative way to end the practice. If that doesn't work uh, because you don't have the space, no worries. You can put the block under the pelvis and just send the legs up without the support, just for a few breaths. If you feel like you don't want any of those and you're already tired or done with the practice and you feel the need to come towards rest, we are almost there. So you can very well come towards Shavasana and set up your space to rest. As usual, I'll guide a little bit of the entryway to corpse pose and then I'll see you on the other end as I um, use my gong or my ball to uh, return and close the practice together. So take this time to release the physical body, to let the prana settle,
to invite again gravity to bring your bones down to earth. And to let the breath be slow, smooth, and long. No need to do an opportunity to be. <laughs>